Yes, soak it all in. It's season number five. And to quickly recap and just to brag about what we have done so far, one La Liga in the bag. We are currently the Spanish champions and domestic double champions because, of course, we've picked up three Copa del Reyes in our four years at the club of Villarreal without making any transfers whatsoever ourselves. It's all done by our perfect director of football, Mark Furhurst, uh, just in case you are unaware, I guess, of this series. There has been four episodes so far. Mark Fairhurst has perfect attributes. Sometimes he takes the season off. Sometimes he comes back and makes unbelievable signings like Lorenzo Luca. Well, we're up the 2nd of September. Has he done the same? Has he made any signings? Has he sold any players? Because that would be devastating. Now, at the end of the season, we have two departures in Mandy and Serge Aurier at the back, both leaving on free transfers. Mark decided not to renew any contracts, but he did bring in two players. Thierno Ballo has joined us. Not a bad little player, to be honest. 23 years of age, can play up front or in behind the striker. Two roles that we have and could use some uh, some extra legs in there. I don't think he's going to light up the league or anything like that, but it's still a good player to bring into the club. Now, James Trafford is going to be a good backup uh, goalkeeper. We don't have one right now. We've brought him in from Manchester City and yeah, I mean, he's happy to be the backup in behind, obviously, Karnaseki, who has been fantastic for us last season. So that's the two sign-ins that he has brought in on free transfers. However, when the season ticked over, we have made one transfer out, one transfer in. The transfer out was Samake. It's a youngster from our academy that has come through. 3.3 million pound. I'm over the moon with that because he doesn't look like he's going to be very good at all. However, the signing in, I'm very aware of. Adama Nagalo from Norgeland, of course. Youth to gold. Started brand new series. Started on Twitch on Monday. You're seeing this on Wednesday if you're watching it live. There's been two episodes so far. You can catch up with it on the second channel or on Twitch. And the next stream will be Friday morning, nine o'clock. Make sure you're there because FC Norgeland, the youth to gold story, starts over again this week. Adamo Nagalo is one of those players. He's fantastic. The fact he hasn't been picked up from Norgeland yet, got to be happy with that. And that's a great, great little sign in there. Five million pound. You just know you're either going to get a great player or you're going to make profit on him, right? So that's two big signings. Now, there is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is always my motto so we don't even have to look at the tactic we're keeping it i think i've generally struck gold and i'm going to start doing some tactic testers on this on this uh, actual tactic itself lorenzo lucas staying up front evanielson staying in there the rest you know what to do assistant manager you are the one who obviously did it last season which won us the league. Now, let's take a look at the schedule because it's been weird start, to be honest. We had a 2-0 victory against Levante. Goals coming in from Ivanjusson with the first. Alex Baena, what a ball that is for the on-rushing. Ivanjusson slots it in. And then the second came in the second half as well, obviously. Pau Torres playing in the CDM role, plays it through to Foyth, who is very high at the pitch, slots it in from distance. It's a great little finish there from... A guy who's actually supposed to be playing centre-back, but he isn't. He's playing right-back, doing very well there. Paul Torres in that CDM role, filling in if we don't have the correct players. But we played very well against Levante. They could not handle us, only having one shot and one on target. But that was it. 14 shots from us. We dominated the game. Then we went to Barcelona and we lost 4-1 and got absolutely demolished. Griezmann there getting a brace. It's disappointing. Sevilla, always going to be a tricky game, of course. The there or thereabouts. Parejo managed to pick up a brace. Ivanielson got one. And Ocampo scored a brace and uh, N Naziri scored the equaliser in the 83rd minute at one stage as well we went 3-1 up it's very disappointing from being 1-0 down going 3-1 up you think get in and then you, lo you, you, you lose two goals and drop two points disappointing worry then do we worry Lorenzo Luca three games no goals only a 6.3 average rating has the time come for Lorenzo Luca is he passed it now at the age of 24 well we're going to simulate the season Take us to January, the see the chance window, and find out. But before we do that, today's video is sponsored by Spitch, the brand new fantasy football app that is brand new to the market that you can win a ton of prizes with. Yes, for the next few game weeks in the Premier League, if you book a pitch in Spitch, you get a chance to win some fantastic prizes. Apple Watches, uh, you can win a Premier League jersey, even 
a package holiday. And if you finish in the top 20 from the previous three weeks of these prizes, then you also can bag some more prizes too. Not to mention, like, it is free to play as well. So it's fantasy football free to play. You don't have to play it from the start of the season. You can join right now and still win those prizes. Not to mention as well, you can join our community league and challenge me and dad maybe you fancy your chances against us in the community league there's about 47 of you in there last time i checked for this weekend it was incredible thank you very much to everybody who's joined this but unfortunately you do have to be over 18 and well 18 or over you have to take a snap of your identification and it's for the uk and ireland only so thank you very much to everybody who's been joining and thank you very much for spitch for sponsoring the video well we're here in february and our title defense doesn't look like it's going too well yeah we're 12 points off of Barcelona who are absolutely running away with it this year it does seem like we're just drawing way too many games you can see there's so many 1-1s there it's unbelievable games where last season we would have picked up victories for sure because Lorenzo Luca just could not stop scoring goals it's not to say that we're not scoring them though because we have got the third highest goal scored in the league which yeah, I mean, we're just conceding maybe a little bit too much. So maybe in those one one alls, maybe last season, there were a lot of one nils. Statistically, the most goals is scored by Real Madrid. You can see where they're there. We're the most tackles, though, and we do have the most shots. Uh, fewest conceded. We're all the way down in seventh place. That's the telltale sign. Competitions, then. Right, so we've qualified through the Champions League group. We didn't look at the Champions League group, actually. We got too cocky and decided we're too good to even look at it. We're in the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey. That's fantastic. Uh, let's take a look at the Champions League group, then. Who do we have in our group? to help us get through to this stage because we've got to face Juve. So, so we did top the group though. PSV, Lazio, Lille. Not a bad group, but we won six out of six. Jesus. Wow, that is fantastic. That's really good. We've got to be happy with that. We've got to be happy with that. There's a, if we take a look at the schedule then, we went for a long stage where we did not lose a game from that Barcelona loss all the way down to Real Madrid. There's not a loss in there. In any competition, it's just one too many draws possibly. Uh, and then Christmas period, obviously you always start to drop off a little bit. The Super Cup of semi-final, obviously we didn't do too well there, but that's fine. We're okay with that. If there's any competition that we didn't mind not winning, it's that. Out of all the ones, we need to carry on. So Juve in the next round. That's interesting. Let's take a look. Goal saying Lorenzo Lucas only scored 21. There's our problem. Parejo with 11. Has there been any sign-ins? So Dan Juma is leaving. Wow. Okay. Now we did see, I was training him to play in behind the striker. I'm guessing he's just not playing many games. Our assistants just decided not to play him at all, really, I guess. Yeah. It's a shame. He's a quality player. I really think he'd be really good in that set, uh, shadow strike role. Maybe a big, big mistake on my part. Maybe I should be trying to play him every single game. Oh, we have signed somebody and we've sold some too. Manu Morlanes has left. He's gone to Granada. That's interesting. And Calvin Ramsey. That's a quality signing. Oh, I'm all for that. Obviously, we've seen Johan Foyf play right back. But from Aberdeen, 11.75 million pound. Not bad. Yeah, he's made one appearance already. Got a good average rating. I want to show you actually the squad depth and assistant report. So the assistant report suggests that this would be our best 11 if we were to choose between obviously every player available to us. Hard to argue against that when this was basically the team that won the league last year. Squad depth is quite an interesting one because yeah, Paul Torres is arguably our best DM, but he's also our best centre-back. He's just a quality player overall, Pau Torres. Uh, in his prime now, 29. Glad to keep hold of him, really. But I think what he has managed to do, Mike Fairhurst, is gradually grow a team where they're all three, all three stars or above, and we always have some secondary players in those positions. Maybe we're a little bit short up top if Lorenzo is obviously not firing all cylinders. Could be our only problem. Well, let's simulate to the end of the season and find out. Yeah, it was pretty obvious we weren't going to win the league. We finished in third place. Sociedad actually finished in second. Barcelona were 99 points in total. They come back with a vengeance after uh, we split their two league wins there. All right, that's fair enough. We're still in Champions League. That's the most important thing. I don't think we ended up drawing as many games as what I anticipated from the eight that we drew all the way up until there. I guess Sociedad just had a really good end of the season. Lorenzo Lucas still takes the golden boot, though. We slagged off how many goals he scored. I think he turned it up a notch from the window through to the end of the... 
uh, end of the season. Jeremy Pino there with 13 assists and one of the highest average ratings in there too. That's great to see. Most uh, man of matches. Great. What about other competitions? <gasps> oh no, I thought we completed it. I thought we had done it. I thought we had won the Champions League. Runners up. Buy me after extra time. You've got to be kidding me. And we are winning. And we were down to 10 men. We weren't winning. Wow, they scored really early. Well, let's take a look at goals then. Oh, I'm so annoyed by that. I'm so annoyed by that. Ivan Nielsen, why did you get yourself sent off? Straight red card as well. All right, so it started off with a Thomas Muller goal. He's broke the offside trap. Oh, good, Karnaseki. Where were you going? That was unnecessary, wasn't it? Uh, Parejo to Lorenzo Luca. That's where he picks up so many goals and Parejo picks up so many assists. Sabitzer with a direct free kick in extra time. And then I guess we started pushing and Matt Diallo's playing for them. Uh, he's played through Beto. What is Nagalo doing? Oh, Karnaseki's had a stinker. Karnaseki's had a stinker. Maybe important matches is not one of his strong ports because that is pretty dreadful. He's still at a 7.3. Were they watching the goals? To be fair, though, they battered us. They had 34 shots, but which tells me, by the way, that he saved so many shots and then had... Two horrendous stinkers. Incredible, really. We had a very poor XG compared to them. We didn't deserve to win the final, but we got there. That's a glimmer of hope. Of course, the, the main aim of the save is to win the Champions League within the 10 years. We almost did in half the time. Quarter final of the Copa del Rey as well. Oh, that's such a shame. 42 goals by Lorenzo Luca in the end. He definitely took it up a notch. Uh, I'm guessing if we went by his form, it was a very high. I mean, not very much lately, but there was a stage where he could not stop scoring, uh, which is quite interesting there from the, yeah, from February there, like from Valentine's Day. Got Valentine's Day hat trick. Oh, somebody got lucky in the evening, I reckon. Lorenzo Luca, you bloody legend. Uh, getting a hat trick on Valentine's Day. A up. Uh, so yeah, he definitely had a great end of the season for sure. Parejo, I mean, he's 37 now and he's putting in performances like that. He has, that's the end of his contract. Oh, I wonder if he's going to get renewed. I mean, if he doesn't, what a way to go out. We'll have to find out in the next episode, which is tomorrow's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Smash a like if you can. I'm really glad you're all enjoying the series, as am I. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.